everyone, and we're back. My name is Miss Scarlet Tanager, and we're playing some Xenosaga Episode 3. Still not going to say the subtitle. It's in German, I think. This thing is pretty big. That's what she More said. Like an asteroid than a rock formation. Hi, Chaos. It's 70 kilometers in diameter. Unable to determine mass due to abnormal gravitational fields. Still, these values seem to be rather unusual. That's going to well. I didn't well. think anything this size could cause such a gravitational disturbance. Gravity roughly 1G around the object. Hi, Jin. But that seems rather strange. It's definitely not big enough to have Wait. a gravity of 1G. What is this? <gasps> Whoa! It looks like a large portion of land from somewhere. It could even be the remains Momo. of a constructed planet. Ziggy. No. The shape of the underside looks too uniform for that. It appears to have been artificially cut away from its original mass. Multiple unidentified craft are approaching. And of course, Momo's entire design got changed again. Tony! Damn it! Is that Ormus? It's nicer than to greet us. You know, it'd be nice to play this. Continue your approach to the island and collect data. We can handle these guys ourselves. Now wait just a second! Is he telling us to go there by ourselves? No way in hell. We don't get any hazard pay. <laughs> they give you hazard pay if you ask. I'll give you guys a damn escort. Now go do what you're paid to do. <laughs> Some gameplay in my video game. <laughs> I okay, it's praying about attacking and ES battles. Yeah, okay, this is different um, from the first one. You can pick attacks. Um, this is less important now, but you have a gate. Essentially, you have a gauge, and you pick however many attacks. It's more important later where you can you could do like three missile hits at once, or one stingray, or whatever. If I remember correctly, you upgrade the ESs just like you would upgrade, um... Like, they level up just like, uh... Just like your people do. So sort of like how it was in the second game. Boop, boop! Kill it! Rude. Hmm. I kill you. <laughs> Please hit. I forgot how you trigger co-ops. I can't remember how to do that. I can't remember if it's random or not. But yes, co-ops are a very good way to get massive damage. I just can't remember if they're triggered randomly or not. Yay! That was easy. Elsa. It's safe. Is it though? It's gathering data at coordinates KZ255 Y724. Okay. Momo and Jin, you go guard the Elsa. Right. Roger. Junior, enemy reinforcements. They don't know when to give up. How many are there this time? Don't worry about Just it. Just one. And it's after. The Elsa. Uh-oh. You're on the way. What? <gasps> Be gone. Rude. Well, well. Your inexperience is beginning to show! Rude. Is that a new model? Momo, stay back! I'll take him down! Will you though? <sighs> what? Will you though? Yep, a mech sword fight. Okay. <laughs> a black ES. It's agility. Junior or um Jin is now attracted to it. Uzuki. Yep. These two so have the hots for each other. 
This location must mean a great deal, due to the fact that you've come all this way here to join us. And what if it does? It's not a phenomenon you can handle, and you'll never understand its meaning. I... I'm going to send you and your ESs right to your grave. Are you though? I don't think so, seeing as this is a battle tutorial. <laughs> and battle tutorials tend to be easy. Uh, yes, they're equipped with vessels of anima. That's the power source that's inside all of the mech suits. How to awaken the anima? When the gauge reaches 100%, you can do a thing! Yay! Except we don't have enough on any of them for that. Ooh. Instead, I hit this. Bonk. And you, I hit this. Let's see how far my blades will go against you. Again, these two have such hots for each other. <laughs> like the hots these guys have for each other is too damn strong. Both shots of the mo something moan. Hmm. Nice name for an attack there, Green. Here I go. I'm pretty sure those trigger randomly. I'm thinking those trigger randomly. I'll show you the difference between me and you. Again, the name is called Moan. <laughs> the name of the attack is Moan. That's. That's suspicious. <laughs> okay. So the one who gets their first anima attack is Jin. Do it, Jin. Do it, Jin. But wait, you guys are in Don't space. There shouldn't laugh. be any noises. Is that the extent of your power? Shut up, Barry. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, when you do the Awaken Anima, you can either get a whole bunch more of the E and so you can do multiple regular attacks, or you can do the special attack. If I remember correctly, might be wrong, I haven't played this game in a while. I used to play it a lot, though. Like, an obscene amount. <laughs> Alright, let's... You attack. I can't remember what Zebulun says. Zebulun special attack. Arid Star. Oh, it's just an Ether Beam attack. It's almost dead though. Again, it's not it's not gonna be a hard fight. It's a tutorial. They ain't gonna do that to us. Okay. Your turn for Anima. You special attack. And I think the special attack changes depending on who you have piloting the ES. Or maybe that was just the second game. They're blurring together a bit. Okay, time for more another half an hour of cutscenes. <laughs> half an hour of cutscenes. Excellent. Colonel, what is Ormus so concerned about? The last cutscene was pre what was um in-game rendered. This one's pre-rendered. I wish they'd have you them all in-game rendered. Your now it's time for you to die. Okay. Another this? another dick measuring what? contest between Margulis and Jin. Momo, what's happening? It's a space-time transfer. An anomaly has manifested around the landmass. Imaginary number values increasing. Get the fuck out! The surface is rotating in reverse phase. <laughs> Speak English! You have to get out of here now! Run. Oh. Rude! You won't get away from me that easily. Who's okay? Margulis, we got shit to do. You could have killed Jin oh, Bear, Tony. Bear. Well, now you don't have a sword, Margulis. Captain! Hurry! You must escape! They headed for the Holy Land. How dare they! Let them go! You threw the sword at their engines, dude! <laughs> Your Eminence, 
How can you say that? The blessed saint sleeps in that land. She is already in our possession. Even if they were able to reach the place, there would be nothing for them to find there. What was that? Don't tell me you have already acted. Obviously. Yes. I have a new task for you. Return at once. Do you understand? Yes, your eminence. Again, he's like, how dare they land on there? If they didn't land, they crashed. <laughs> and they crashed because you hit their engines. Who's okay? Unfortunately, we'll have to settle this later. Yeah, okay, Barry. In the meantime, I want you to concentrate on saving your friends. You have got to think of something to help them out at this point. That is, if there is a way to help save their poor souls. But, Colonel... But, Colonel, I don't have any friends. I don't give a fuck about those guys on the Elsa. <laughs> no, Jen's not Shion. Hurry up and reverse the thrusters. So this I like. The professor and his assistant in the first two games. In the first game was optional. In the second game was technically optional. But in this game, not only are they actual characters that are part of the main storyline, but they have voice acting now. <laughs> that border surface is nasty. It'll grind this ship to dust. Tony! But it does make this game a little bit more confusing if you never did the side quests for the professor in the previous two games. This ain't happening. This, this ain't, ain't happening. happening. It's fine. Damn it, the logical drive is shot. We don't have any power. It's no good. It won't hold. Then crash softly, Tony. We're gonna crash. Brace yourselves. Just just crash gently. There's an art to crashing gently so you don't murder anyone. Also, probably put some seatbelts on. Mary, can you locate the Elsa's position? We're on it. Wait a sec. How are we? Did you trace it? IFF lost. Unable to determine the Elsa's location. God damn it. Were they shot down? Obviously. No way. Besides, we didn't detect any explosions. Regardless of what happened, we won't be able to learn any more from here. Let's hurry to Little Master's location. Yeah. Hear that, Little Master? Wait just a little bit. Yeah, gotcha. Please hurry. Yeah, it's like not like there's anything else Junior could do. <laughs> Jin, how's it look over there? I'm afraid the Reuben sensors won't be able to show us anymore. We'll have to wait for the Durandal's arrival. Damn it! Just be okay, guys. And this is all an ex. See, <laughs> save the game. An entire chapter. And all it was, all it was, was cutscenes and some ES tutorials. <laughs> I didn't even run around much, really. In fact, I don't think I ran around once. Well then. <laughs> oh, I, I adore this game, but man, does it front load the cutscenes. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's not as heavy handed later on, but definitely front loads them. <sighs> Probably because it has to explain what the hell is going on. <laughs> Let's go see your daughter, sister. She treats Cosmos like both her daughter and her sister, so I'm never sure which one to refer to. Because <laughs> she's simultaneously both. <laughs> Which thinks she can just use that one thing to travel through space <laughs> so easily. Don't need no spaceship! Nope. Okay, here's our exposition dump of what the fuck's going on. One year has now passed since the battle in Old Milshan space. Ever since the Zoar was swallowed up by the giant Gnosis, the Gnosis phenomenon has increased in frequency, and the people are now constantly exposed to its threat. Yet, Despite the large number of star systems that have been destroyed by the Gnosis, people continue to resist, refusing to cooperate with each other. Sounds like the COVID-19 pandemic. One pointless conflict after another. 
Ooh, hits right in the topical. I found myself full of questions. I wanted to know more about the immigrant fleet, the organization that was behind the Milshan conflict, as well as the words that were spoken by the patriarch Sergius. He said that the Ormus are the rightful possessors of the Zohar. So I began to investigate. I was in Xenosaga too, I, I believe. I wanted to know more about the relationship between the Milshan conflict and the Zohar on my own. Six months ago, I encountered a group of people called Skientia. I was able to obtain their aid as I found myself becoming more and more involved in an incident that revolved around a mysterious program called Lemigeton. It turned out to be a Zohar control program, which was developed during the Lost Jerusalem era. Its creator, Grimoire, continued to wander the UMN as a mental entity in search of a being. He was searching for Nephilim, the girl in the white dress that has appeared before me countless times. <laughs> the existence of an organization controlling Grimoire from the shadows came to light. Vector's Special Technology Advancement Division. This department, jointly managed by the government and private industry, had been wiped from the records. But there was no doubt, it had been created by the organization I worked for. This is what happens when you don't do well on one game, but Vector still decide to truncate the last one. The UTIC organization. And the UTIC organization was connected with Ormus. But the evidence was concealed and the truth had been buried away into the darkness. Everything except for one fact. I found out the name of the individual who was in the lead position at that time in the management office. When I saw the name, Suo Uzuki, it's her daddy. I felt nothing. No surprise, no sadness, and no anger. To be honest, I felt nothing at all. Obviously not. Somewhere in my heart, I think that I must have expected it. All I could feel was a sense of resignation, knowing that the inevitable had finally come to pass. And I decided to quit my job at Vector. The friends I made there and Cosmos were the only bonds I had linking me to Kevin. But I couldn't stand being there any longer. Maybe I did it to atone for all of the victims. Maybe it was to strike back at my late father, who had abandoned my mother. No, it wasn't for either of those reasons. But they still let her keep the ES freaking craft. <laughs> it was probably that I... Ah, my old nemesis. <laughs> Cutting off your thought patterns syndrome in a freaking JRPG. So, TLDR. TLDR. Shion was investigating all of the Gnosis that were killing more and more and more people after Xenosaga 2. And... Let's see. I'm supposed shenanigans to the in ensued. And by shenanigans, I mean... She accidentally found out that her father was part of a secret government and vector industry cabal of people who were investigating things they really shouldn't have been, including a random dude's soul that was trapped in the space-time continuum. <laughs> and it caused a whole bunch of people to die. Yeah, TLDR. <laughs> There's still some time. I think I'll look around the city. Let me run. There we go. I do like her outfit in this game. Even though that shirt really does not make sense. <laughs> hey, do you want to talk to me? Try pressing the square button. That starts a conversation between us. Cool. <laughs> cool story, bro. Ah, oh, this fucking game. Oh, wrong way. This way! Whee! I mean, this game does look really good for a PlayStation 2 game, even though I am playing it up-res. What's this? 
You must be Shion Uzuki. We've been expecting you. Mr. Alan Ridgely is waiting for you at the Mobius Hotel. The hotel is located in the nor northern part of the first business district. Cool. Send it to the Jerusalem? Yes. Gigantic elevator. <laughs> So this idea of having a spaceport that just has a giant tunnel down to the surface of the planet, I actually really like it. I think I might have seen it in a couple other space-themed ones. It sort of explains the whole plot point in this first game, where Shion, or well, where, am I? where the Elsa was going to burn up in the atmosphere even though it was a spaceship. It's because most spaceships in this series are made to be made in space to be in space, not to actually go to a planet. You're fine, Guinan. Get away. Stop. Stay back. This is only gonna end well. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Don't touch me. Praising. Stop it. Don't talk to me. I refuse to acknowledge you. Stop talking to me. Apparently he doesn't Stop want it. to. I won't do what you want. I... I... <laughs> <laughs> God, I love the writing in this game. Uriev? Dr. Uriev. Mm -hmm. And there's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Guinan is Dimitri. <laughs> is something wrong? Are you not feeling well? I'm just having some trouble getting along with my son. I'm fine. Please continue. I... Yes, sir. Currently, the operational experiments are underway in the research ward. And the doctor wishes to give you a report. I see. Accompany me, Citrine. Yes, sir. Yep. She's the only female URTV. <laughs> Super spiffy. I like her outfit. That's this asshole. <sighs> Sup, you jerk. So, you finally decided to come listen to me, Dmitry Yuryev. I see you're as unfriendly as ever, Sellers. I don't have much time. Just tell me the results. You're as bad as Mongulis. You commanders are so inflexible. Anyway, the startup experiment has already succeeded. The problem is, what? Maybe you should let what him finish. These values. The pulse from the temporal lobe is unstable. Perhaps there's a problem in the link with the pilot. This is based on the prototype recovered from the ruins of Milsha. It was originally calibrated for an Ormus priest, so these results are unsurprising. Same as the power supply. It was designed to match the original Zohar. Currently, we're operating it using the spare emulator unit I constructed. But because of it, the output is unstable, and the link with the pilot is poor. And also, the pilot looks like a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> Are you saying it won't run? Exactly the opposite. It generates too much power, and we're unable to stop it. Sounds perfect! Federation's technicians are no fools, but Ormus is much more experienced in regards to this. If we at least had Vector participating, the outcome might have been a little different. Why did you remove them from the project? The Lamagetan incident. I'm sure you're aware they were involved in it. I don't know what he's scheming, but I can't allow him to gain top secret information. I... What about the alternative you're using in place of Cosmos? Have you determined its origin? It may be another vector plot. Yuri, have you should probably listen to Sellers. He's on to something. <laughs> I have people working on that now. Even if it was, it's still just an anti-gnosis weapon. We'll just use it for our own purpose. Now, give me an update on the Macabre. 
No visible problems with that thing. We've already completed the final calibration. So many cutscenes. Thanks to the Y data you brought. Did I hurt your pride? Take that how you like. But I hope you appreciate my work. No one appreciates you, Sellers. You're an asshole. Everybody in this game is assholes. By putting the fragments together. It would almost Except for have Cosmos. Been faster to build it from scratch. Cosmos is never an asshole. Of course. Because she's Cosmos. In this condition, I can't guarantee its safety. There's not much time left before the demonstration. I trust you'll have it ready by then. <laughs> of course. Otherwise, there'd be no point of me being here. By the way, have you found an opponent? You're going to need something impressive to fight this thing. Don't worry. That's already been arranged. Oh. It's the perfect opponent to silence the fools at support vector. Cosmos! They're gonna have the giant mech fight Cosmos. Yep. Here's the Cosmos! Big news! Big news! Hey, where's the new chief? If you're looking for Chief Ridgely, he went out to the city. Alan! He said he was meeting someone. A meeting? Oh, he must have gone to see Chief Uzuki. What does he think he's doing at a time like this? He should just tell her he's in love with her. He needs to make up his mind and act. Or, you know, don't tell her that because he's way too good for her. <laughs> By Uzuki, you mean Shion Uzuki, the former chief? No, just talking about Jin. She took she's responsibility for the Gnosis terrorism and resigned, right? Was she Chief Ridgely's girlfriend? What? <laughs> if she were, he would be delirious. Accurate. <laughs> but reality is harsh. So, what's the big news? Did something happen? Oh, yeah. Cosmos is going to be the opponent for the new weapon in the demonstration. Sadly, we do not get to play that fight either. It happens in an FMV. All the cool stuff happens new in weapon. FMVs. You mean that? Yeah, that crazy thing. I guess they want to acquire real-world combat data along with the activation test. But they've sure got a lot of confidence to pick Cosmos as the opponent. Yeah. They may have removed her from the project, but she's still ready for combat. Do they think they can win over support if it defeats Cosmos? Yep. That's yeah, the exact I hear point. There's a lot of vector friendly parliament members in the government. It's probably a move to take some wind out of that faction. I can't believe they're using the product of our stress and caffeine as a political <laughs> tool. They'll learn not to mess with the princess of first division. We're going to send them packing. You sure about that? Damn it! We need to get started on the calibration work right away! What the hell is the new chief doing at a time like this? Going to meet his not girlfriend. <laughs> his totally not girlfriend. But really wants to be his girlfriend. Even though he is way too good for her. Yes, Xion, too good for you. He is way too good for you. Let's just do. Ooh. Welcome to the Federation Capital Planet, Fifth Jerusalem. Development of the Integrated Weapons System Merkava is currently taking place on this planet. This is the core of the Zohar Project. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> it was the north part of the business district. I think is where he's at. Something. Let's go see him. See, according to the map Alan gave me, the way to the Mobius Hotel is, go south when you get off the orbital elevator. It's the tallest building in the first business district. Cool. Go south. The tallest building. Okay. Going south. Is it here? First business district south. Yep. Do, do, do. Okay. Oh, thank God, it's a save point. <laughs> a save point that's not a chapter end. <laughs> uh, I think it's this one. Do, 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 do. It's actually time for me to end this video. Yeah, I know. Two videos in a row that are 90% cutscene. Thankfully, I think since they've offloaded all the information about what the fuck happened between Xenosaga 2 and 3, 
I vaguely remember there being less of a block of cutscenes. There's still gonna be a lot of cutscenes. This is very much a Kojima game, even though Kojima has, is nowhere near the development team. But hopefully less than we just had. <laughs> My name is Miss Scarlet Teenager, and I have been playing some Xenosaga Episode 3. I'll see you all in the next video.